obviously. Now, in Agile, risk can be defined as anti-value. In Agile, there is no threat and opportunity. In Agile, a risk is a negative event. It's a threat. And because it's anti-value, managing risks is critical for value-driven delivery or Agile environments. As a result, Agile teams need to balance the goals of delivering business value and reduce risk each time they select a new batch of features or stories to work on. So managing risk is very critical in an agile environment. It's anti-value. So we need to balance our efforts or the agile team needs to balance their efforts between developing new features and executing risk response plans to mitigate the impact of the risks. As the project continues, the team will also need to continually assess the severity of the project threats and monitor their overall project risk profile. So the team needs to keep an eye on the risk severity on the project. They should do an assessment each while to monitor the overall risk profile of the project. Agile teams usually manage their threats or their risks by examining three popular tools, the risk adjusted backlog, the risk severity, and the risk burn down graphs. These are the three tools I will be covering in this lecture, starting with the risk adjusted backlog. Now, before talking about the risk adjusted backlog, what is the product backlog? The product backlog, as explained earlier, it's a document where the product owner will list all the features the agile team should develop in this project. And then the product owner will prioritize these features based on their anticipated value. Now, in planning each iteration, before we start each iteration, Agile Teams seeks to balance delivering the highest value features and mitigating the biggest risks that remain on the project. So there are two objectives for an Agile team before starting each iteration. We need to deliver the highest value features for our client. At the same time, we need to execute activities in order to mitigate the biggest risks that are on the project. Usually, they do this by moving the items which the greatest value and risk to the top of their backlog. So the items with the highest impact and the items with the greatest value will be on the top of the backlog. What does that mean on the top of the backlog? The items with the highest priority. The backlog might start out as just a list of business features involved in the project divided into practical bundles of work. But once the risk response activities are added and prioritized, it can be referred to as a risk adjusted backlog. So what's the difference between a product backlog and a risk adjusted backlog? The product backlog contains only the business features prioritized as per the anticipated value, while a risk adjusted backlog will include both the business features and the risk response activities in order to mitigate the risks. This list will help Agile team to focus on both value delivery and risk reduction activities. Most project teams are comfortable with ranking customer requirements on the basis of business value and risk level. So the benefit of having the risk adjusted backlog that we will have the view on the features with the highest priority for the clients in addition to a view to the risks with the highest impact. Agile teams will start building the risk adjusted backlog by using the return on investment per feature. After business representatives have attributed a dollar value to each of the product features, we can prioritize those features based on business value. So the product owner is responsible for prioritizing the features on the product backlog. And usually this prioritization is made based on the expected return of investment for each feature. Here is an example of the product backlog features pri prioritized as per the value. Next, we need some way to monetize the risk avoidance and risk mitigation activities. To get this figure, we can calculate the expected monetary value of each risk. So this is a sample of the product backlog. And this backlog, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven features prioritized as per the uh, expected return on investment. So on the top of the product backlog, you will have the items with the highest return on investment. So they are just prioritized 
by business value. This is a product backlog. Now, the expected monetary value, the formula which we will use in order to monetize the value for each risk, you are familiar with this formula, the impact in dollars multiplied by the percentage. Using this approach, we can rank the project risks to produce a prioritized list of threats and issues ordered by expected monetary value. So assuming you have seven risks on your project, these are the seven threats or seven risks. And for each one, we have the impact in US dollars and we have the probability. And then you calculated the expected monetary value and you prioritized the items or the risks based on their expected monetary value. Okay, so now we have seven risks and seven features in addition to the seven requirements we have on the product backlog. Now deal with each risk as having the response plan or the action you need to do in order to deal with this risk. So for this risk, for example, the risk response plan will cost around 1,500 US dollars or should not cost more than 1,500 US dollars. Now it's the time to prioritize the requirements with the risks. So you will have a risk adjusted backlog as shown here. This is a risk adjusted backlog showing not only the business features, showing the business features with the risk action plans prioritized together. So the team will work on this risk adjusted backlog. This is the difference between the risk adjusted backlog and the product backlog. And the risk adjusted backlog is the most commonly tool in dealing with threats in agile projects. The risk adjusted backlog is a tool that uses calculations only to get at what's truly important, the priority of work items that need to be done. The second tool is the risk severity. Risks are generally assessed by two measures. The risk probability, the probability is a measure of how likely a risk is to occur and the risk impact, which is a measure of the consequences to the project should the risk actually occur. Agile teams need to continue to monitor risks and track the effectiveness of their risk reduction efforts. So the two dimensions are the same we use in traditional environments, the probability and the impact. There is one drawback of using the expected monetary value formula. It can be tempting to focus too much on the exact dollar amounts rather than the relative value of the risks. Yes, that's true. The expected monetary value is a mathematical formula. Okay. To help us avoid this problem, to help us avoid this problem, there is another matrix we can use to rank risks and determine risk response priorities. And this tool that will replace the expected monetary value is the risk severity. Now to calculate the risk severity, it's very similar to the expected monetary value. Just instead of using risks, probability percentage and dollar impact, we instead rank its probability and impact on a simple scale, such as low, we'll give one, medium, you will give it a two, and high, you will give it a three. Then we multiply those probability and impact rankings to calculate the risk severity. So it's a formula similar to the one we use for the expected monetary value. It's just instead of multiplying the probability in dollar by the impact, you will multiply the risk impact ranking by the risk probability ranking. For example, let's say we decide to rank the probability and impact for our risks on a three-point scale, low, medium, and high. Using this scale, if you have a risk that has a high probability and a high impact, what will be the risk severity? The high probability, you will it will have a three, and the high impact also will have a three. So three by three, it's nine. On the other hand, a risk that has a high probability and low impact, the high will take a three and the low will take a one so three by one it will be three so the key difference between using the risk severity and the expected monetary value is having the relative ranking implemented by the risk severity we start by doing an analysis of the risks so that we can assign a probability and impact score to each one then we used those scores to calculate the severity of each risk as the project progress the team can expand the initial analysis to record how their attempts to manage the project risks are working. The next chart shows the progress of the risks over the first four months of the project. So this is an example of having uh, or monitoring the risk severity throughout the project. You have four risks, 
ريموت ابلكيشن ديستريبيوشن درايفر بيرفورمانس افيلابيلتي اوف اركيتكت اند اكسس تو يوزر كوميونيتي ان جانوري فبراير مارش اند ابريل وي هاف ذا ذا امباكت سكور اتس نوت ا فاليو ان دولار ذا بروبابيلتي اتس اولسو ا سكور اور رانك اند ملتيبلاينج بوث يو ويل هاف ذا سيفيرتي سو هافينج ان اكزامبل لايك ريسك 1 ريموت ابلكيشن ديستريبيوشن ذا سيفيرتي واز 6 in January and zero in February. It can be one of two reasons. Either the timing of the risk uh, was only in January, so there is no probability of having the risk in February, or we implemented a response plan that made the probability of this risk zero in February. During these four months, many of the project risks were mitigated or avoided. For example, the first risk ended up not being a problem and risk severity went from six to zero now the last tool of managing risks in an agile environment is the risk burn down charts due to the long lists of risks identified and to make the data easier to grasp at a glance we can convert numbers into risk burn down graphs so it's a visual tool a visual representation of the current status of the risks Risk burn down graphs are essentially stacked area graphs to cumulate of cumulative project risk severity the severity scores for each risk are plotted on uh, the top of another to show the project's cumulative severity profile so by looking at this at the risk burn down graph it's burned down because it shows the remaining risk profile it will be a burn up if it is the opposite so we have uh, six identified risks and we have the risk severity represented in a stacked area each risk with a color and it is cumulative so the risk severity in june was at 10 while in september it's around uh, 7. when risks and their history of severity are displayed in this format it's much easier to interpret the overall risk status and trends of the project and the burn down graphs are very useful in order to report to executives risk burn down graphs quickly inform stakeholders whether the risks are moving in the right direction downward or if they are escalating so these are the three tools you are using in agile environments to manage the project threats